And our latest installment on Nuclear Watch looks at how engineers found a way around the hazard. Here's NHK World's Kenichiro Okamoto. A team of engineers entered the Reactor 1 building at Fukushima Daiichi in November. The engineers took a small boat with them. They planned to float it around the reactor containment vessel to trace the source of contaminated water. Months earlier, representatives of major institutions such as Hitachi GE, Kyushu Institute of Technology, and the University of Tokyo came together to collaborate on the project. They had a budget of about $3 million. They fitted the boat with a camera capable of transmitting video, and they attached a specially designed cable to control the device. Radiation would have blocked the radio waves used in remote controls. They plan to drop the boat into the area surrounding the containment vessel and record video. But they had limited time to do the work because of high levels of radiation. So they rehearsed in a model of the reactor building. They needed to carefully drop the boat through a complicated piping system. Then they'd be able to do the survey. Once they'd run test after test, they got the go-ahead to do the real thing. The team set up at Fukushima Daiichi. They had to walk in an area where the radiation level is 5 millisieverts per hour. They can only stay here for 15 minutes. So the engineers rotated it in shifts. The engineers successfully placed the boat alongside the containment vessel. They used the remote control to move it around. The boat sent back a radiation reading of 2,000 millisieverts per hour. Anyone exposed to that would die in a few hours. The device transmitted these images, showing water flowing down the side of the containment vessel. The camera captured another leak nearby. Contaminated water was gushing out of a broken pipe. Experts analyzed the video and were shocked by what they saw. It will be extremely difficult to pinpoint the leaks. It will all depend on our ability to develop new robots. The space between the metal containment vessel and the concrete that surrounds it is only 5 centimeters. That makes it hard for engineers to get a picture of the clock so they can figure out how to fix it. Managers of Fukushima Daiichi need to find out where radioactive water is coming from in order to proceed with the decommissioning process. But they are facing an uphill battle, one that underscores the difficulties presented by the nuclear crisis. Kenichiro Okamoto, NHK World.
Local residents and people in charge of the nuclear facility north of Fukushima Daiichi have held an evacuation drill based on a nuclear disaster striking the plant. It's the first such practice to be held since the Fukushima meltdowns in 2011. The exercise assumed that radioactive substances were released from the Onagawa plant of Tohoku Electric Power Company after a major earthquake knocked out all power. The plant lies about 100 kilometers north of Fukushima Daiichi. Participants included about 800 people from the Miyagi prefectural government, seven municipalities, hospitals and police and fire stations. Officials also linked up with the Nuclear Regulation Authority Secretariat through video. They shared information about which residents needed to be evacuated or ordered to stay indoors. The town of Misato held a drill in which all residents within 30 kilometers of the plant are ordered to take shelter indoors. I was calm because I knew it was a drill, but I worry how I would react if a real disaster strikes. I'm not sure I could move like I did today. New government guidelines have increased the number of people around the Onagawa plant who will need to evacuate from 18,000 to 210,000. But the safety plans are behind schedule. The municipalities have yet to compile the required evacuation measures. Japanese researchers have made what they believe is a breakthrough in developing embryonic stem cells. They say that by exposing the cells to stress, they can produce the cells faster and easier. The researchers soaked lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell, from baby mice into a mildly acidic solution for about 30 minutes. They then cultured them. The team says the process activated genes that keep cells pliable enough to allow them to develop into various types of cells. They put the cells into mice and confirmed that they developed into skin, muscle, and other types of cells. The researchers from the Institute Riken and other institutions have dubbed the phenomenon stimulus-triggered acquisition of pluripotency. STAP cells have similar qualities to induced pluripotent stem cells, which are created by putting genes into cells. But the researchers say the new method is simpler and quicker. They say the research from will contribute to studies on regenerative medicine and immunity. They'll now study whether they can apply the technique to human Scientists cells. In Japan are trying to rein in nature and save lives. Heavy snow blankets areas along the Sea of Japan coast in winter. It can sometimes trigger disasters that kill and injure. So the scientists are experimenting with a technology that produces rain and snow to reduce it. NHK World's Sachio Sugita shows us how it works. In mid-January, Japanese scientists conducted an experiment. This is the view from 3.5 kilometers above the sea near Akita. This cloud will drop a lot of snow when it reaches land. The plane carried liquid carbon dioxide. It's to be released in the cloud to control snowfall. Researchers have long been studying and using this technology to produce rain and snow aiming to solve water shortages. Professor Kikuro Tomine is the leading Japanese researcher in this field. Japan has suffered water shortages, but in recent years, a record amount of rain and snow has fallen. Tomine has been working on ways to apply this technology to curb precipitation on land and the resulting natural disasters. 
You can make the clouds vanish depending on how you release the carbon dioxide. The method to produce rain can be also used to reduce rain. Many researchers worldwide have attempted to create rain artificially using silver iodide or dry ice. But scientists from Japan use a different substance, liquid carbon dioxide. It is used to make carbonated drinks and fairly easy to obtain. Its impact on the environment is very small. For this experiment, liquid carbon dioxide was blasted into a cloud that might produce snow. Inside the cloud, ice crystals form because the liquid carbon dioxide cools the water vapor instantly. The goal is to create ice crystals and discharge them as rain or snow before the clouds grow large. On the day of the experiment, the researchers head offshore of Akita Prefecture. Heavy snow has been falling there every day. I'm aiming for the part in front that's swelling. Is that okay? That's it. We're ready to discharge. They had fired off about 13 kilograms of liquid carbon dioxide. The cloud began to change after half an hour. This is the cloud. It's getting fuzzier. The cloud at the back was not treated. The mist in the front of it is a cloud that was sprayed. It had thinned out because the moisture has been reduced. The snow created by the experiment was seen falling into the sea. They checked the radar images of the cloud. The image on the left was taken before the experiment. The one on the right, afterwards. The cloud was thinner where their aircraft had passed. If we can prove that releasing liquid carbon dioxide into clouds is effective, we can start putting this method into practice and decrease accidents. Our job now is to come up with concrete results. Inspired by a desire to reduce the number of accidents and deaths from natural disasters, Tomine will press on with his work.